Good morning. Uh, today's notes are going to cover factoring. So let's take a look at our note page. And you can see from my graphic organizer at the top where it says factoring, I have the first branch of our diagram, GCF. Now GCF stands for greatest common factor. Because I always want you to check to see if there's a greatest common factor first. And then, um, if there is, factor it out. If not, it's either going to be dots or trinomial factoring. And dot stands for difference of two perfect squares. Okay, so our perfect squares would be 1 times 1, 1, 2 times 2, 4, 3 times 3, 9, 4 times 4, 16, 5 times 5, 25, keep going. And then algebraically, um, x times x is x squared, x squared times x squared is x to the fourth, x to the fourth times x to the fourth is x to the eighth. But let's say I do x cubed times x cubed, so that'd be x to the sixth. So you can see that you have to have an even exponent. Okay? And your trinomial factoring just means you're going to have three terms. So this one has three, or this one has two. Okay? So let's take a look at example number one. Oh, and another key thing too for vocab is that factoring means, okay, you factor times factor, which gives you a product. So there are two numbers, algebraic expressions, two terms that we're going to multiply to get the product. So we're given the product and we have to work backwards to determine what did you multiply. And if you have your calculator, right, that's going to be very handy to check. So back to example number one. Okay, let's factor 12x squared plus 3. So do the numbers 12 and 3 have a common factor? And the answer is yes. You should always check, does the smaller number go into, or is the smaller number a factor of the larger? And yes, 12 is divisible by 3. So we're going to put the 3 out front. So greatest common factoring has only one set of parentheses with the GCF out front. And then we're going to divide both of these by 3, and then put the answer in our parentheses. So 12x squared divided by 3 is going to be 4x squared. The x squared doesn't change because there's no x that we're dividing by. And then 3 divided by 3 is 1. So let's check. If you have a graphing calculator, you're going to type the original expression into y1 and type your factors into y2 and the y equal lines of the calculator. So y, let's clear both of this from yesterday. So we've got 12x squared plus 3 and then 3 parenthesis 4x squared plus 1. Now if I'm right, and remember these are degree 2, the highest exponent is a 2, so it's a quadratic. So we should see that u-shaped curve. And if the red goes over the blue, we're all set. And there you go. Okay, so these factors are correct. So the GCF was just a number, okay, in that case. So example number two, let's look at 7x squared minus 2x. Okay. 2. Does, is 7 divisible by 2? No. 7 is prime. The only factors are 1 and 7, and it's also not even. Um, is x squared divisible by x? Or yes. So there's a common factor of x. Okay. Divide these both by x. 
and 7x squared divided by x, there's no number in the bottom, or you can think of it as a 1, right? There's always a coefficient of 1 even though we don't write it. So 7 divided by 1 is 7, and then x squared divided by x is just x. Because what that's really saying in a thought bubble, so x squared divided by x, x squared is x times x, right? And if we divide it by an x, we can cancel out one of the x's and we're left with just 1. And then negative 2 divided by 1 is a negative 2, and x over x cancels. So here's our answer there. So in this case, the GCF was a number. In this case, it was a variable. Let's look at one with a combination. So example number 3. We're going to look at x to the 4th plus x squared y squared. Well, actually, I said a combination. So let's add some numbers of 10. Let's squeeze in a 10 there, and then 25 here. All right. So 25x to the 4th plus 10x squared y squared. So both 10 and 25 are divisible by 5. So we're going to divide them both by 5. That's the GCF of the numbers. And then they both have x's in common. And this one has 4, but this one only has 2. So we take the lower one, x squared. So now let's add that to what we're dividing by. Now 25 divided by 5 is 5. x to the 4th divided by x squared. So we can take away 2 from here, take away 2 from the top, and we're left with 2. Okay. Uh, positive 10 over 5 is a positive 2. And then the x squareds cancel out, and we're left with just y squared. And you can always do a check as well. So if I check this, I just distribute to make sure I get back to this original problem, 25x to the 4th plus 10x squared y squared. So let's see. Using the distributive property, 5 times 5 is 25, x squared times x squared is x to the 4th, so that matches the first term, plus 5 times 2, 10, x squared times y squared, they're not like bases, so we simply just copy it down in alphabetical order, and that matches. Good. On to number 4. All right, let's do negative 20 minus 16x. So they don't have a variable in common, but 16 and 20 are both divisible by 4. And since the leading coefficient, or the leading term in this case, um, is negative, well, even if I put it in standard form and put this x first, it's still negative. So I'm going to factor out a negative 4. So I divide these both by negative 4 and negative over negative positive, 20 divided by 4, 5, negative over negative positive, 16 divided by 4, 4, and there's nothing to divide this x by, so it's going to stay the same. Okay, so now let's look at number 5, and let's do the binomial x squared minus 9. So another quadratic as its degree 2, and it is in standard form, and I look, and there's no GCF. The number here, remember, is a 1, and GCF is a 1, essentially, between the numbers, but we never want to factor out just the 1. Is this the difference of two perfect squares? Yes, and I guess I should have highlighted back here that difference means subtraction. So it's the subtraction of two perfect squares. The 9's a perfect square, and x a perfect square. So we set up our two parentheses. So x and x multiplies to x squared. Now, what goes here are the two numbers that are the same that multiply to 9. So it'll be 3 and 3, and the signs are different, plus, minus. So if you just want to check, there is an old trick for little smile, big smile. So a little smile, these two inner, ter inner terms. So positive 3 times x is a positive 3x. 
and the big smile, negative 3x. When you add those together, that's an additive inverse, we get 0. And there is no middle term. There's no x's. They're gone. Okay, so we know that we are correct. So this is the difference of two perfect squares. But note that I checked for greatest common factor first. Example number six. So 121 minus y squared. All right, so there's no number there. Well, the one, there's no GCF other than one. So for the numbers, they don't have a variable in common. This is not greatest common factoring. Um, is our type of factoring? This is the difference of two perfect squares. 121 is a perfect square. So I said in my parentheses, because x squared came first up here, that's why it led in our parentheses. Since the number comes first, it's going to be 11 times 11. Still signs are different, plus minus, and then y times y is y squared. Okay. Number seven. Let's do x squared, y squared, minus 64. All right, there's no variable here, so they don't have a variable in common, and there's a 1 and a 64, so there's no GCF. So when there's no GCF, again, you set up your two parentheses. We know the signs are going to be different. So when I factor this, all right, um, we know that x times x gives us x squared. So it's going to be xy times xy gives us x squared y squared. And then for 64, it was i8 and i8, and I was sick on the floor. So here's our answers here. Number 8. Let's do 4x squared minus 25. All right, greatest common factor. Is 25 divisible by 4? No. So we set up our two parentheses because there's no variable here. So there's no variable in common. Signs are different, plus, minus. What multiplies to 4x squared? That would be 2x times 2x is 2 times 2. It has to be the same, remember. 2 times 2 is 4. x times x, x squared. And then to get the 25, that would be 5 times 5. And then last, let's do 100x to the 4th, men x to the 4th. So let me white, white, use white out for that. Making it a little different each time. Minus 1. All right, so 100 is divisible by 1, but we don't plot a GCF ever of just 1, and there's no variable in common. So there's no greatest common factor. Let's set up our parentheses. Signs are different. Well, what goes last is easy because it's 1 times 1. And then first, 100x to the fourth. Well, 10 times 10 is 100. And then x squared it has to be the same times x squared is x to the fourth. So today, we covered greatest common factoring and trinomial, or not trinomial factoring, um, dots, or the difference of two perfect squares factoring. Okay, we will finish our unit as far as notes tomorrow. Have a good day.